Uh, all right, well, uh, let's see, I had just a few things that I had. I'm going to close this door real fast, actually. That's fine. I had a few things that um, I wanted to talk about. One was the OSS North America. I had sent out, I don't know if you had a chance to take a look at that abstract, the audience and benefits. It's a pretty, pretty um, typical thing that they're looking for on these submissions. Yeah. So this one I wanted to do, a, I think the presentation is the best route for this. And I wanted to do um, something towards growth, maturity, and decline. Okay. And so the general premise of the presentation would be obviously the continued overview and kind of current standing of where we're at with respect to the chaos project. Um, I'd like to talk a little bit about the work groups and I can give an example. Ildiko is not going to be in Vancouver. I had reached out to her to see if she would like to participate as well. Um, but she and I will just talk out of band and I can kind of get an update on what's going on with the DNI work group at the time, specifically with OpenStack. I can talk with Nicole, Danielle as well. Um, but then I think the, the focus is to really hone in on the growth, maturity, and decline category. Mm -hmm. And Sean, you and Jesus would, oh, there's Ildiko. Sean, you and Jesus would, uh, would present your work to date with Augur. Which and, should be, um should be more advanced after the Google Summer of Code. Yeah, and I mean, this isn't until August something or other, like late August or something. Yeah. So, uh, and Jesus, I think, is anticipating with Grimoire Lab to have kind of on the side the panels that would show, you know, mm -hmm. BNI or growth maturity and decline or value or risk. Um, so he would also have some kind of some working uh, tools on the Grimoire Lab side. And that would kind of wrap things up. Yeah, I mean, I t one of the things that I remember, because I mean, this is going to be part of the, I mean, they changed the name, like a community track, right? Community related track that John o. Bacon's running. Correct. Uh, I mean, if they, if, if the pattern repeats itself, I think last year there were like, what John o. was saying was that there were like record number of submissions. Um, okay. So you have to, yeah, you have to turn a lot of things away. Um, I mean, so I think one of the things that I'm finding is that because rather than just because um, it starts off, the abstract starts off with, you know, the current status and overview, because that makes it, I think, less interesting. I think that needs to be there in the presentation. OK, uh, but I think if it can be more you can pr you can provide more detail on what we're going to cover in growth maturity and decline or or whatever the other working groups okay. right i think if we can provide more details i think that would get more attention from the programming committee that's yeah, that's sort of my yeah suggestion um and uh i because i think the deadline's like this sunday if i'm yeah, not mistaken yeah, yeah so it's yeah the event's like four months away but the submission needs to be done like this week yeah um so uh yeah that's that's sort of what i'm what i'm finding out i think the more details that we can provide on the level of depth that we're going to get to and and i think that would be helpful like if if we do like you know if, if it's if it people get the impression that this is just going to be another update on what's going on i, I think it'll be less interesting to the programming committee i agree yeah okay. that's just my feedback but i mean take it for what it's worth but that's worth a lot yeah. i will yeah. if you want it to yeah. be accepted not rejected yeah yeah, yeah. i mean i <laughs> want to increase the chance of this getting accepted without bribing john l but <laughs> okay uh okay uh consider that good i will make those changes no problem uh ildico and jesus were just talking about the open source north america Kind of abstract and Ray had suggested that we hone in a little bit more on the details, which I can I can do no problem on uh, kind of the software. So I will make those changes. Uh, all right, cool. Uh, and then I think there was another potential birds of a feather session. I think the birds of a feather, I think it's still what you were talking about, Ray. I think it's by the track. Yeah, I, I don't know what, uh, let me try to find the page. Like, I think he just lists like 
potential topics. Like he doesn't go into formats, I don't believe. But I'm thinking. No, I'm talking like on the submission page. Like on the uh, submission okay. Page, yeah. I pick the track that I'm interested in. Oh, okay. I, so I'm guessing those two kind of stay lined up. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I see what you're saying. Sorry. So I think that we should definitely submit a birds of a feather as well. Uh huh. In addition to the presentation. All right. And, you know, we did that birds of a feather kind of or unconference session in Sonoma, which I thought was pretty nice in that tiny little mm -hmm. room. Mm -hmm. Remember, Jesus, you had presented kind of the state of affairs with Grimoire Lab stuff, and Sean, you had presented kind of the state of affairs with uh, GH Data at the time, Augur now. But we could do something similar to that. And, you know, we just kind of show the software as part of the birds of a feather and then kind of open it up for how people would like to connect or things that they would like to see software side or metric side. I mean, birds of a feather, they're pretty informal. But I think if the two of you could kind of lead that, that would be cool. Mm -hmm. You're muted, Jesus. Oops. No, I'm not. Oh, well, you were quiet anyway. Now, I heard you there at the end. Okay, so now I always say that that's that's fine with me. I tried to do uh, I I tried to look at it in the call for papers, but I couldn't find that. I mean something for birds of a feather. So it seems that you can submit talks and panels. If you go through the submission system, you'll see it in there as one of the radio button choices. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. Good. I I try to to have a look at it. Then. Yeah, and I think if you just follow. My guess is you're going to have that same abstract audience benefits to the ecosystem kind of thing. So it's it's limited to like 900 characters. It's not long at all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. So they shouldn't take very long to, to kind of work out. I will check. Okay. If I have any trouble, I, I, tell, I tell you, right? Yeah, we, just, we, talk, we talked last week about possibly a tutorial targeting community managers. Um, yeah. I think we kind of hedged on that one a little bit. Yeah, we did hedge. The complexity of getting the community managers together. In any case, we have the, uh, the ChaosCon the day before. And if you remember the format, we still have to decide on it. But the idea was during the afternoon, try to have some tutorials. And those could be on software and on, on, on metrics. And uh, my impression is that people for the Linux Foundation are going to be much more busier during the OSS itself than the day before. So maybe we could try to have tutorials the day before, invite people from the foundation to see where they want to come. What do you think? Is this part of the day before that we have at UBC? Yes. Or is this, okay, yeah. so have that be actually like an open community manager invite where there's a tutorial that's part of that? Yes. I like that idea. And then for Open Source North America, we submit a presentation, which is around growth, maturity, and decline. We submit a birds of a feather. It is really about community building, but we can kind of hone in on the, on the two of you leading that from the software side of things. Uh, and I think that's it for Open Source Summit North America. We submit the presentation. And then I, I do think there is a diversity and inclusion track as well, is that right? I'm pretty sure there is. Yeah, I believe so. And I think uh, Nicole and Danielle are planning to submit to that track, the diversity and inclusion track. I think so. So I heard from Danielle that he is um, intended to submit something. Yeah, so that would be three submissions across two different tracks. So I also propose to Ray to maybe submit something on code review because we are working with code review and we hope to deploy it for OpenFE, but we still didn't have time to discuss. Ray, I sent you the message yesterday. Yeah, I just I just replied. So yeah, happy happy to help out any way I can. I, I mean, it looks definitely looks like a good topic. So okay, that that would be great. So the idea is that we are we, we intend to improve very much the support for code review and carry it in uh, Grimoire Lab, and apply it among other projects to OpenFE. So the submission would be like a mixture of what can be analyzed in code review and how that applies to OpenFV. And maybe you can do it with the second part. And that could also give us the opportunity to discuss during these months on what lessons can be learned and, and stuff. So this, it's, it's code review, C-O-D-E? Code, 
Yeah, yeah, code review. Okay. That it, it would be based on Garrett, which is the tool that OpenFV is using. Yeah, but I think it could be pretty generic too. I mean, some of the conversations that I've had with with Jesus and, and others at Baturja is that, I mean, we're like, what, what I found was that there are people that are like more active in reviews versus like submitting code. Um, right. And I, I think there might be like a slightly different audiences, like people that are not necessarily coders, but have like good ideas in general, right? Like mm -hmm. architecturally or other other expertise. So I, I when I was sort of looking through the data last year, I, I thought that was somewhat interesting in our community, but I'm guessing we're not like, you know, that different than versus others, but yeah. So, okay. Yeah. yeah. Let me, um, so that I'm gonna make a, a command proposal here. So I'll go ahead and, and it sounds like we have four potential proposals going into okay. Open Source Summit North America. So we have the presentation that Ray provided feedback on right yep. now, growth maturity yep. design. I'll fix that and mm -hmm. I could send it out again, but I'll fix it. To yeah, yeah. no, I'm sure it'll be fine. Yep. Um, for the birds of a feather, um, Georg, can you get that started? Yeah, I can get the birds of feather start. And that was focused on software, right? Yeah, I think it's about community. It's always about community development, you know, like trying to bring people together, but we can kind of have a, a software push to it, I think. Okay. Yeah. Well, let, let me know if you need some help or, or reviewing the proposal or something. I can, I can help with that. And then I'll send it around. Cool. And then uh, Nicole, I think, and Danielle are doing one for the DNI track. So I yeah, I think it's called the. Oh, oh, go ahead, Jesus. No, no, I am saying that I'm. I'm saying Daniel tomorrow. I can check with him. Just can you do that? That'd be good. Yeah, I think it's called the. I was looking for the exact phrasing. It's called the Di Diversity Empowerment Summit. So. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Diversity. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, but we, I think we all know what okay. we're talking about. So, but, but that, that's a part. That's a part of the OSS, right? Yep. Yep. Okay. And then, um, lastly, is Jesus and Ray are doing a proposal on code review. Right. Okay. Okay. Cool. All right. So that's four that would go in, and then we would do the tutorials. The more hands-on tutorials potentially the day before at mm -hmm. ChaosCon at the University of British Columbia. Yes. Okay. Great. Okay. Okay. Cool. Thanks. Anybody have any comments on that? No. These are due the 29th, so I just we need to like. <laughs> yeah. 26th, I think. Good. Uh, are they doing the 26th? It's, no, it's, it's Sunday the 29th. Yep. 29th. Oh, Friday, right? Oh, Sunday. The 29th. This Sunday. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I just don't even know what day of the week the 26th is, apparently. Yeah. Well, if you do it on the 26th, you're fine. Yeah. It's all good. <laughs> before, <laughs> before the deadline. So. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Cool. Uh, all right. So, any other things on Open Source Summit North America? I think we kind of have our. Orders on that. With respect to ChaosCon the day before, finally the committee is established. You probably saw the, the message in the mailing list. So my idea is to start working tomorrow. So tomorrow I'm going to send a message to all of those who volunteered. And uh, the first thing, by the way, saying is to, to try to arrange for the place. So since you had the contact in the university, have, you could yeah, get I, have a, I have the place. I don't have the okay. yet. Great. You would be having a message from me, just uh, looking for the de asking for the details, right? So, okay. Uh, Alrighty. Are you going to have a a regular meeting for the chaos con? So I don't know. My idea for now would be to try to do it by email because most of the staff can be done that way. But if needed, we can. If you don't mind, maybe we can use this one for coordination if that's needed. You can always use this room is always open. Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. In any case, I, I don't expect a lot of work now. Mainly, it's going to be to prepare the, the call for papers and uh, to define the structure and uh, secure the place, who Shane already did. 
And uh, most of the action should be later on when we have proposals and we need to decide on them. I, I hope. Okay. Got it. Cool. All right, cool. Uh, any other on that kind of that August period up in Vancouver? We'll call it that. <laughs> Everybody good? All right, cool. Uh, maybe I'll jump down to Google Summer of Code. So congratulations, everybody. We have yeah. two students who are going to be joining. Um, I think introductions have gone out on the mail list, and they both responded. So I, yeah. I don't know. We were having a meeting uh, with Sin today uh, for kicking this off. So okay. expect some more messages in the mailing list with some details about what they are going to do. Okay. And uh, my, my personal idea, and I think Sin is sharing this, is having all the, most of the action will be a pull request and issue tracking and stuff in GitHub. And maybe some messages for general coordination and follow up so that people stay tuned to what is happening. Right, Sin? Do you agree? Yeah, that, yeah, that were, yeah. exactly. Okay. You also might just let them know to, they're welcome to attend these meetings. It's not essential, but if they have open questions. That's a great idea. Yeah, yeah, they're embedded anyway because we embedded and we, we sent a public invitation in the mailing list to all um, Google Summer of Code students. But maybe at least uh, one of them is having some trouble because of the time zone because uh, he is in yeah. India, and maybe this is a bit late for. The, for yeah, the it's day. it's like almost ten o'clock in the yeah. evening in India, so it would be difficult. Yeah. But so I can check with him anyway, just yeah. to know. And the other one is in uh, Antilia, right? In the, uh, uh, he's in um, Trinidad and Tobago. Okay, so it's basically the same time zone than you, right? I think it's. I think he's two time zones ahead of me. I think he's in Atlantic time. Okay. Okay. Oh. Well, in any case, it's not the bad time, right? It's not. A, yeah. It's. It's. Well, it's. This is not a bad time for him because it's like one in the afternoon. Yeah. Well, I do know that. Um, uh, I've done Google Summer of Code in the past. I know that the the reports that are due to Google are pretty important over the course of the summer. So mm -hmm. just kind of keep that on your radar. And obviously, I can help in preparing any of those and anything like that. But those are, I think that's a pretty important milestone that needs to be hit from an administrative perspective. So as far as I know, we need to report before July 11th. Okay. Which is basically a go on a go, on a go condition for them to get the money. I mean, the first half yeah, of the money. Yeah, exactly. I think it's important for them to get paid. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay. All right. Cool. I, I think that's. I think the Google Summer of Code is pretty. Just moving along, great. So I don't. That's think a good any... opportunity. Now let's see what happens. But it's a very good opportunity. So I'm. I'm very happy with it. Okay. Cool. Uh, let's see. So I had a, a few things right now. Um, we have two, two metric categories that uh, need to move forward. So we've obviously been making really cool progress with diversity and inclusion and the work that everybody's doing in that regard. It's, it's really great. The meetings are, are really interesting and uh, so just some great discussions going on there. Um, and I know that, Sean, you're starting up the growth, maturity, and decline work group starting May 3rd. Yep. Is the first kind of meeting on that, which is awesome. But now I think, um, at least from my perspective, it's to set sights on uh, value and risk. You know, right. Kind of the first two are getting out, out the door, and, and now I think it's time to set sights on either value or risk. I think my inclination is towards risk anybody has I'm, thoughts on this so i'm obviously interested in risk i would imagine you would be <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um I, I think my schedule is going to be up enough that i can start acting active around august okay okay um i'm pretty maybe in july even too but it's pretty crazy with the event for me to, until then um i'm seeing lots of interesting um artifacts emerging from the mergers and acquisitions. And my question for you is how much is, a, is risk associated with value? And how much, how do we tease them apart? Do we try to get value together? 
Yeah, that's a good question, and I don't know the answer to that. Um, they're kind of, um, well, I mean, in my experience, they are definitely related, and they almost reflect two different perspectives on how to look at open source software, yeah. right? I mean, like lawyers typically view it from the perspective of risk. Um, product developers, product managers view that as an opportunity or value proposition as yeah. overgeneralization, but. Yeah, I would also look at from the perspective of a venture capitalist. Yeah, for sure. Okay. In terms of what do you invest in and what are the warning signs that you will not invest in something? Okay. Um, I think, um, okay. And a, product, and a product manager or the other persona. Um, like uh, basically someone who owns the product portfolio at organizations and which of the projects will you want to potentially, is it worth you investing in? Some of that will be decisions on things like growth, maturity, decline, and diversity, etc. But I think risk in terms of if they use it, can, if they put people on it, can they actually use it at the end of the day is what they look at from the discussions I've had in the past. All right, got it. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. So yeah, if there's someone else that would hopefully wants to step up and lead it, that would be awesome. But if not, towards August, I'll help. Okay. Okay. okay well, one of the first things that I'm going to do is take what we have and get it into the format that's more consistent with the this goal question method format sure. that we with uh, the diversity and inclusion and uh, growth, maturity, and decline categories. So that's kind of step one. Uh huh. Um, so I think that's maybe just kind of the best place to start at the moment. Um, yeah. And then I think it's a good question about, I mean, if we can collapse risk and value into a single category, great. I mean, as I say a lot, good design is knowing when you're done removing things, <laughs> not when it's time to add more. So. Yeah. Well, like I say, if you can take a first pass, I can definitely carve out time to do a review between. That them. sounds great. So why don't I put that on my to-do list and, in terms of value, that was one that um, that Peter Monks had brought to the table. Yeah. So I think he's really interested in downstream value. So how do you determine the value of a project as having an impact in the ecosystem? Yeah, I've got you know I've got a really interesting one that's crossing my desk right now. Mm -hmm. um, I've been in some discussions with the GCC community. And that is really touching on some interesting issues as regards to some of what we're setting up. And to some extent, I almost like to use them as a touch point to cross check um, what's happening on the growth maturity decline, what's potentially happening on the risk um, and, and so forth. Um, because I'm seeing a lot of problems uh, that I've seen people tackling in other spaces, but that community not quite tackling yet. <laughs> So it's getting interest. It's getting interesting from that perspective. From the things I'm seeing right now, I don't know to what extent we've got any metric on that one. And it's certainly not. I don't know. Hey, Sus, is there any dashboards for the GCP stuff anymore? I don't think so. So um, I don't think so. But we could consider that. So I think that they moved to Git some time ago, because they were using something else. And uh, maybe we could produce something. In any case, when you talk about GCC and other problems, projects like that, my impression is that when they, when they talk about value, they talk about um, a very different view of value from the venture capitalist, for instance. Well, the venture capitalists want something that they, you know, they can recover the money quickly and so on. Right. While the value of GCC is the value for the ecosystem, which is way different and way important. Yeah. So maybe we should make a difference between both or something like that. I mean, because, you know, the, the word value is too overloaded, so. <laughs> <laughs> completely, agree. completely agree with you. Um, yeah. you know, getting a, an initial sort of feel for what the numbers actually show would be interesting. Um, the value of it um, to all the projects that have a dependency on it mm -hmm. is, mm -hmm. it's got a much larger reach, especially when you start bringing the libraries so GC, the GNU project to me is, you know, the GCC, the GLIPC, GDB, Ben Utils, which everyone has a dependency on and everyone sort of takes for granted right now. 
but they've got a very, it's a 30 year old project. They've got a very crafty infrastructure. It's very hard for people to onboard into it. It's a grain community, etc. So it, it touches, and quite frankly, it's a bit, community has a very strong lack of diversity in it. Okay. Uh, so we did an analysis of uh, Lipsy like uh, maybe 10 years ago. And at that time, it was like five people maintaining the library. I mean, mm -hmm. most of the work was doing, was doing bad, like five people. And you know, every single project in Linux requires libc. Right. So that, that's a kind of a staff, which is quite important to highlight. Yeah, considering so much of the ecosystem takes it for granted today. Mm -hmm. It's just there and it's going to work. But, you know, um, it's not shiny, shiny. It's maintenance. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And um, there's that factor then that makes it hard for them to attract people. It's also a function of the community as elements of, you know, their steering committee doesn't, is technical folk. It's not focused on a community and they mm -hmm. haven't really paid attention to the community. And I haven't seen the FSF really support them that much either. Yeah, yeah. So there's a lot of factors against that project, but we all have, uh, you know, invested interest. Um, so actually shining some light on that problem might be a good thing to do as a case study in some ways. Yeah, yes. yeah, I, I, yeah, I think we had this discussion before. I, I think we need to be, I mean, I think more specific versus just saying value. Cause I mean, like Jesus was saying, it's, it's overloaded. I mean, it, it does it mean like usage by other community? That's one thing. Is it, you know, are there dependencies on, on certain libraries or, or certain yeah. communities by other community? I, I think I, I almost want to, maybe under value, we break it down, right? So, I mean, that would be, that might be the way to do it. I think Peter, like I, 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 when we had discussions like several months ago, I think his was more on like, who's using like a certain code, right? I think it was more on the usage type of thing. But, but yeah, so. Is, that's a value yeah. of how many downstream dependencies. Right. To some extent, mining of the package building repos, mm -hmm. recipes in Yocto, um, the seeds in Ubuntu slash Debian, um, you know, the, the RPM, you can pretty much get a bit of a mapping as to who has, who's calling this to bring them in. And so it's a scope of impact effectively on mm -hmm. the depth trees to figure out who's using it. So some of that's actually calculable um, in terms of, you know, who's using it. The other factor is I think the CII project has been looking at, you know, core infrastructure initiative. Um, you know, that's some of the metrics that they've been using for their survey. Historically, should probably filter into the risk here too, I think. And it should be looked at as part of this whole risk and value story. Is mm -hmm. to take it, let's use what other people have already done and see to what extent we can incorporate it in to this. Um, you know, security is something everyone's going to care about. Where does security fall? You know, how actively are right procedures and processes being followed? And so, like the CII badging does do that measurement already. So, mm -hmm. we've got some interesting pieces we could take and exploit for building up the risk value story. Um, value being, you know, who cares about it, but also risk of, well, if that community uh, doesn't stay stable, isn't there isn't sufficient investment in it, you know, what's the scope of impact? So, like I say, as you can tell, I'm interested <laughs> there. And I, I give a big, a big thumbs up to reusing things that other people have done. So <laughs> absolutely a huge fan of that. I'm, I'm all behind that. I was wondering just kind of as an out of band thing, uh, if we could actually calculate the B index for the GCC community. So this is, we've been developing, Jesus, we've been developing an index, which is basically a, an H index for projects. So you're familiar with the academic H index. Yeah. Which, yeah. Sites of sites. So we've been developing dependencies of dependencies. It's not just the first order dependencies, but it's the dependencies that those first order dependencies have themselves. Um, and we can calculate, um, it, as long as we have the data available to us, we can calculate uh, at least a second order dependency tree. And maybe we could do that for GCC. I'll check this out, Kate. This just might be at least cursory information that's interesting to you. 
Yeah, yeah. it is. That's cool. Um, yeah, certainly shining some light here and seeing if we can get, um, it, quite frankly, using these metrics that we're evolving and discovering to quite frankly shape the behavior is I think what we actually want as an end goal. And so in, in some ways is to make things more healthy over time, right? Yes, absolutely, so, yes. And so that's why I think that this is an interesting case study to be used for looking at it, but also with me that we do need to effectively make more healthy over time. And so what metrics and you know, what tactics and response to metrics, um, you know, the actions in your word not. Uh, we should we should be trying to advocate and look to what committees that steering committee we want to become healthy. So, All right. That's cool. Okay, awesome. Uh, well, very helpful. I took a lot of notes here. So that was very, very helpful. So thank you. Um, um, Matt, with respect to this proposal decade of starting with risk and value, I'm interested in it, but I would like to push the uh, growth maturity decline uh, work group with uh, Shin before, because mm -hmm. I think that uh, in addition to diversity and inclusion, we need another work group working and performing and producing software and metrics. Oh yeah, and, no, I, uh, I, yeah. yeah. So I will. I would like to push this at, as much as possible. But maybe the timing that you commented, Kate, is good for us, because around August we should be have everything in rails with respect to the Google Summer of Code who are work to work in the semester, and maybe seeing you and me can basically have this at least you know on rails, and maybe some other people can uh, come later and follow on, and maybe yeah. we can do that one. I don't know, but we, we can maybe evaluate in July. See what yeah. it makes sense. If nobody else comes, if somebody else comes before, I'm, I'm happy with that. But otherwise, okay. I have. Uh, I agree. I mean, I have. Oh, go ahead, Sean. Did you have something? Well, I think there's. You know, it, getting the. I mean, there's. We're getting the working groups going, and that's important. And and the, there is relationship between them, as Kate pointed out, with, between value and, and risk. But there's also a relationship between growth maturity and decline metrics and diversity and inclusion because. Mm -hmm. The growth mm -hmm. and decline metrics are usually the stick that's used to prevent diversity and inclusion from occurring. And so, <laughs> I mean, there's this, there's this sort of care and feeding of the dynamics that we create. Like we could do harm if the GMD metrics are not respectful of the things that we're learning over in the diversity and inclusion discussions. Yep. Mm -hmm. and, and so, you know, us taking on a coordinating role you know, I think of it as coordinating more than leadership. It's just, you know, someone's got to call the meetings and do the secretarial work. Um, <laughs> uh, and that's really all it is, but it, right. And it doesn't, and I think there is like, there's benefits, I think for us being involved in multiple discussions as folks coordinating. I mean, I, you know, frankly, with all the things going on in email, uh, I lost track of when the diversity and inclusion meetings are, and I can't actually find, I don't know where that is listed. Maybe is it on a website somewhere? But I should be listening to those at least. I have been in there. Yeah, we do have a repository where we update and we list it on the website. Okay. Sorry, that was a long-winded thing, but. So uh, yeah, a, a couple couple notes on this. So one, I, I think I agree. The categories necessarily kind of overlap um, quite naturally. I think from a rhetorical perspective, it's just important that we keep them somewhat separated so that we can talk about them independently as we need to, as opposed to just saying we have one giant category. And I know you weren't saying that, Sean, but. No, I know, yeah, I know. I, I, good point though. So, and then um, uh, I, I will say, you know, part of part of my like motive, it's my, my ulterior motive in all of this is to fully get the work groups off the ground. So I think, E and I is, is is advancing pretty awesomely and building on the work that had been done with Petergia and OpenStack in the past, and that's just awesome. And now uh, growth maturity and decline is having its first meeting on May 3rd. And so now that's slowly going. And if we can start getting uh, risk or risk slash value, whatever we end up calling it off of the ground, just kind of my, my motive is not to necessarily have everybody be part of these, but to, to slowly, yeah. slowly move them all forward and then I'll kind of just keep my eyes on how all of them are doing and if I can assist in any way. So kind of the overall chaos project upon which we have these different work 
And I think two are getting off the ground. And if we can get this third slash fourth off the ground, that would be really great forward momentum for the project as a whole. So, and whether or not I'm in the work groups is, I don't you know, we'll see. So, but I can at least help, help get them it, to the best of my ability off the ground. Um, so and I, I have an interest in risk too, Kate. So that might be it. <laughs> I know, I know. Yeah, just from my past experience. So I'll probably be hanging out there. So even Jesus or Sean, I mean, if you can kind of get it on your radar, if it's July, that's great. But anything I can do between now and July to move this forward yeah. in a good way, you know, let's, let's do, I'll do that. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, what else? Those are my, those are my topics. Google Summer of Code the rest of the categories currently standing in chaos and then open source some in North America. Any other thoughts? We appear to be being targeted for, by um, spammers for joining um, the open chain. Oh, we're getting crazy amounts of spam. Yeah, I, I think it sort of stops in Sunday. I mean, knock on wood, but yeah, it's, I mean, it, unfortunately it happens with lots of different mailing lists. Like I, obviously these are bots that's just, trying to subscribe but mm -hmm. yeah yeah mm -hmm. okay i just wanted yeah. to make like i said i was getting copied on some of the things that they were forming yeah your open the chains things. probably they're not alone they have company <laughs> yeah with the chaos project <laughs> yeah it was it was like two mailing lists on chaos like one was for the board and the other one was for the inclusion diversity and inclusion ironically but yeah, and I, I'm actually, yeah. I'm getting a few on the main list as well. I get a few. Really? Okay. Pride to yeah. send. It's a little less, but. Yeah. It, <laughs> but it does, it seems like it's, it's calmed down a little bit, so. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm yeah. also wondering, quite frankly, of uh, whether this is something that we do put into the metrics eventually in terms of supply, the spamming and targeting as value. Yeah. Like if, if you get spam here by value? Yeah. <laughs> Possibly. Somebody's decided that, although it could be more. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I'm actually going to write that down just because I like to capture everything. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I guess it's a, you know. All right. I, I, it's down. I got it. So, all right. <laughs> cool. Uh, what are uh, other things on people's minds right now? Uh, right now. Um, Everybody good? I'm right. yep. good. Everybody's good. Um, just as a reminder, I've been recording these sessions. I do like to get them up on YouTube if you have any thoughts or things that you would like me to not post. I do try to respect people who attend these meetings. I, I also like to record and get these things out for people who can't attend. I get an overview of, of just what we talked about in the uh, hopes of transparency and openness and all that kind of stuff. So okay. you anything you need me to? I have, I have one item that I bring up every week and that's on the, um, on the, govern, on the governance uh, repository, the change to our code of conduct so that the governance board may vote on it and approve it so we can elect our team. Okay, Ray, that's kind of, are you bored? Are you leading the board? Maybe call uh, for So, so sorry, like, Georg, are you, I thought we voted on like approving the committee, but was, is this like approving the, the like, who's leading the? So when yeah. we, when we initially proposed the code of conduct, mm -hmm. we had a very restrictive dis, uh, description of the team. Mm -hmm. And afterwards, we got feedback to open that up and remove those restrictions. And there's a pull request that does that change in language. But mm -hmm. because it does change the code of conduct, I believe the governance board will have to vote on that. Yeah, okay. And it yep. also changes the number of people on the team. And so I don't want to put together a team and have people vote on it only to kick someone off as soon as that change gets accepted okay i mean i think we can even do this via email i mean i think it's like it's I mean, yeah simple enough with the with the language change um 
Yeah, it's no. a minor change. I don't yeah. want you all to meet, have to meet. If you can yeah. vote on this via email and get consensus, that right. will work for me. Yeah, I mean, it, uh, I'm sure it's in my inbox somewhere, but Georg, if you can just send that like a latest poll request and then I can I can send an email out to the to the mailing list and get a vote done in the next week or so. I'm getting it for you right now. All right, cool, thanks. All right. Cool. Uh, what else from folks? Good. All right. Well, uh, I'll... Did you get it right? Uh, I lost it in the chat. You put it in the chat. Oh, okay. I have it, so. Perfect. Cool. Uh, I think next week is next week, May. It is yes. first. So it's an official meeting. I'll put together an agenda. But All right, it doesn't cool. feel that different than this. So. All right, cool. Thanks, everybody. All right, Perfect. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 What was this?